My name is Lyuba Novi. I work uh, at the School of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences uh, in Professor Annalisa Bracco's group. And today what I'm going to do is to give you just a brief overview of my research about coral reef sustainability um, and conservation using non-traditional methods such as machine learning and complex network science. So I will start just by telling you a very non-scientific thing, but I'm pretty sure you all will agree on. Coral reefs are beautiful, and we all want them to stay there for as much as they can. Yes, I mean, I don't have scientific proof proofs for this, but actually what science tells us is that they are really, really important for both the marine ecosystems and humans. So we really want them to stay there. This is because the reefs are, coral reefs are a foundational species, so if they collapse, essentially the entire ecosystem that build upon them collapses as well. They provide food for millions of people on Earth, nesting grounds for fish uh, of commercial importance, uh, and many more. Um, however, despite all this, they are incredibly threatened uh, due to climate warming, due to pollution, overfishing, just to mention a few. And their prior the, essentially their conservation is an urgent priority. Um, but what, uh, while essentially what government are, are striving to reduce green, greenhouse gas emissions uh, and reduce the rate of global warming, uh, local manager are local managers are tasked with, uh, inter with with providing localized interventions that may range to from like. Um, marine protected areas, establishment to more uh, localized solutions such as coral reefs restorations. However, all of these act on a against the backdrop of environmental variability that sets a limit, uh, that, that sets essentially a boundary, a natural boundary of what can or cannot be achieved. So what they do need is a framework, scientific, science-based framework um, of essentially telling them, guiding them on how this climate variability can hamper or can enhance what they want to achieve. Doing this in the ocean is particularly complicated because it requires to solve an ecoregionalization and connectivity problem. So essentially you have to identify where all these coral ecoregions are located, how do they evolve over time and how they are connected, and on the long term how climate variability shape all the situation, right? Well, traditionally, this is solved uh, in oceanography with direct numerical simulation methods. So essentially, you put larvae, of course, virtual larvae, um, on an ocean model uh, velocity field. You track them over time. You look where they end up to. And then you have an idea of what's going on there, which is good. However, it's super, super computationally expensive. So you can only cover just short periods of time or just a few or just like a small areas but it's not what they need they need to cover hundreds of kilometers all at once and maybe decades so what we do in our group is to propose a different approach for that um, we use a machine learning tool which is called delta maps i'm not going to dwell on details don't worry um, let me just tell you that essentially this tool is very powerful because it can be applied to any special temporal field, so you can use essentially data instead of models, and this is a first advantage. Um, and it essentially reduces the dimensionality of the system by, comp by computing areas that share a, a same dynamical function, and then it builds a network up upon these areas. So when you apply this thing to sea surface temperature anomalies, you're actually informing uh, you're actually being informed about ecoregions and connectivity. And the way it works is because there exists a physical link between geostrophic currents that brings larvae around, sea surface temperature, sea surface temperature anomalies when you essentially work at these scales. So by looking at one, you can essentially deduce the other. So what we do in our group is to apply this tool uh, over more than two or three decades we have been able to study two big regions. One is the entire Gulf of Mexico plus Caribbean Sea, and the other region was the uh, Coral Triangle, which is essentially a place, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, it's the, the area of the ocean where the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean merge, essentially. They are super, super important in terms of biodiversity and conservation. So in both cases, we were able to cover uh, with, with a pretty high resolution, uh, about three decades, and this allowed us to 
consider really the effect of climate variability because that's essentially the temporal scale uh, you know, that, 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 that the climate variability acts on. In both cases, we found that climate variability actually shapes connectivity a lot. Just to give you a brief example, uh, for example, in the Coral Triangle, we found that El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is essentially the main mode of climate variability in, in, the, Pacific, uh, in the tropical Pacific, modulates the connectivity, the ecoregions, and all these dynamics. Well, what we already knew is that La Nina, which is one of the phases of this uh, climate mode of variability, actually brings about widespread destruction because of thermal stress over the coral triangle. What we actually discovered thanks to this method is actually that La Nina also enhances large-scale connectivity, which is pretty interesting because it means that when a reef, for example, die off or is really, really damaged, then it can recover by replenishment from larvae, from distant sources. So just to conclude, this is interesting because now we have a tool that allow, allows us to prioritize the timing and location of restoration actions of marine protected areas, giving a framework that is meaningful over long time scales and over like hundreds of kilometers. Of course, there is much, much more of what we do on, on our group. There's, uh, I think there will be another two talks uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow of people from our group. So just in case you're interested, come up to me with questions and I think I have concluded. Thank you so much. Thank you.